What's going on y'all and welcome back to the A-Ray Show. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about why I personally sold out of the energy sector, my overall thoughts and opinions on it, and what direction I think it's going to head in the future. And on a quick side note, these are just my personal opinions, so don't do anything crazy like selling off all your shares just because you saw some dude on YouTube saying so. And honestly, personally, I still believe in the energy sector in the short term at the very least, but we'll have to see how that goes. So anyways, with that, let's get right into the video. <music> So before we get into my thoughts and opinions on the energy sector, let me just show you guys and summarize what I had in my energy sector in the first place. So my energy sector pie was only about 2% of my overall portfolio, so it was very small to begin with. And on top of that, I only had two dividend stocks in there, and those were Chevron and Exxon. There's other good dividend energy stocks out there, but these are the two most basic ones. I didn't really know too much about the energy sector, so I started with these two, and then after I did a little bit more research, I got rid of these two. But yeah, let's just get right into it. So the most enticing thing about energy dividend stocks is that dividend yield. We've got a 6.749% just on these two and others could be a lot higher as well. So that's the thing about energy stocks. Their dividend yield is super high, but it's kind of an illusion because it, it really goes against it. Because if you look at the stock depreciation, if I had invested in these two companies five years ago, I would be down 33% in five years. And then we look at my three year return rate down 46 percent and then my one year return rate down 40 percent so that's the thing with the energy sector it has a really high thick and juicy dividend yield that anybody would love to see but with that stock depreciation it kind of counter reacts that high dividend yield it doesn't really fit with me then that's one of my biggest reasons why i sold out of it because it didn't fit in my overall scheme and my overall plans for my portfolio i'm only 23 and i'm looking to retire not too close for now so Having that yield coming now doesn't really do anything for me. I'd like to have that yield if I'm close to retirement. So if I was like 40 or 50 or even 60, that would be a perfect time to get into energy stocks where they have that yield. And I do see this energy sector bouncing back, these stocks specifically bouncing back. But at the end of the day, I didn't really want to mess with it just because I could have my money allocated in better places that would help me out in the long term in the future more than these energy stocks would. But that's just the first reason because it didn't fit into my portfolio. So let's take a deeper look into both of these dividend companies, ExxonMobil and Chevron. So let's first look at ExxonMobil. So look at the dividend scorecard. They look really good. They've got a dividend yield of 8.35%, which is awesome. Thick and juicy, savory. That's what I'm talking about. And then we've got an annual payout of $3.5 to their $41, which is awesome. And then if we look at their five-year growth rate, they're at almost 5%, which is great. And they've been doing that dividend growth for 30 years. So I don't see them slowing down their dividend growth. I think they're going to keep it going for as long as they possibly can. So it looks great on face value, right? But if you go a little bit deeper, you look at their year-to-date, they're down almost 40%. They're down 40%. One year, they're down almost 40%. And then five years, they're down almost 50%. So... You can see that they're depreciating at a huge rate and their dividend yield won't really make up for that. And I know I'm just getting repetitive, but that's just the overall scope of the energy sector. Most of the stocks will be like that. And you can see that it's at the low range of the 52 week range. So definitely has some things to go over. And now we're just going to go into one more thing. So let's take a look at the dividend safety of ExxonMobil. So you can see that ExxonMobil has a really low payout ratio of a negative 1000%, which is just like atrocious that's crazy so i decided to do a little bit more research of what a negative ratio means because this is the first time i've ever seen a negative ratio so i found out that when a company generates a net loss and still pays its dividends it has a negative payout ratio so this doesn't necessarily mean that exxon mobile is a bad company it just means that they value their shareholders and they value paying out their dividends to their shareholders so that doesn't mean it's a bad thing and it's a good thing to always pay their dividends right but a negative payout ratio is typically a bad sign. It also means that the company had to use existing cash to raise more money to pay the dividends to shareholders. So they're basically going into debt or finding ways to raise more money to pay off their shareholders and dividends. So in that aspect, I guess ExxonMobil is a good company for paying out their dividends, but also having to raise this cash or going into debt or however they finance these dividends, it, it could be a bad thing for the company in the long run. All right, so let's take a look at Chevron and we're going to start to see a pattern form here and a trend. And this is going to follow through for most of the dividend stocks that are in the energy sector. So we're going to see a high dividend yield. We're going to see a decent dividend growth and we're going to see a nice five year growth rate. 
So this is going to happen over and over again in these energy sector stocks that are dividend stocks. And now we're going to take a look at the year to date for this company down negative 22%. This one's down 20%. So you can see it's going to happen over and over again of having a high dividend yield, but the stock depreciation is always there. And then one thing that we're also going to see is their high payout ratio of 538% for Chevron. And this is just a trend that we're going to see over and over again with the energy sector stocks that are dividend stocks. So Exxon and Chevron are paying out a nice dividend right now, but the problem for me is it doesn't really fit into my long-term plan just because I'm not looking to retire anytime soon. I'm looking to retire in a long time. So I'd rather build my portfolio through stock appreciation and dividend reinvesting. So I don't really want to create passive income. And that's what these dividend stocks such as Chevron and Exxon are good for is creating passive income. If I was closer to retirement or if I was in retirement, I'd want to own these stocks and have these stocks. But for now, it doesn't really fit into my long term plan. So I guess that's the first reason why I decided to sell off my energy stocks. OK, so those were just two stocks. So there's pretty small sample size. So I decided to pull out a Vanguard Energy Index one. So it's just an ETF for energy stocks. So you can see the one year it was up about $70 and from there it's currently at $54. So it's been decreasing and of course it was a giant pandemic in March and it's still going on today. But if you compare it to tech stocks or consumer staple stocks or pretty much any of the other sectors, it hasn't recovered as much as those ones have. In fact, those ones, especially tech stocks are at all time highs. So definitely some work to be done with the energy sector. I do believe it's gonna recover in the short term, but we'll have to see. And if we go back five years, we can see that it was originally $83 five years ago and now it's $54. And you can see that it's not really growing by too much anyways. Like if we go pull it back to the max, it's only up from $51 to $54. It's only up $3 in from 2004 to 2020. In 16 years, it's only up $5 or $4. So it's not anything crazy. And that's to be expected with the energy sector. It's not gonna grow like exponentially like the tech sector is. But that's just one of the reasons, once again, it doesn't really fit into my long-term time horizon. So speaking of ETFs, this kind of segments me into my second reason why I decided to get rid of my energy sector stocks. So if we look at VOO, 2% of its holdings is actually allocated to the energy anyway. So I do have a little bit of exposure there. And if you add it up with all the other ETFs that I have, and ETFs are account for about 15% of my portfolio, if each one of these has about 2% give or take, that'll be around 2% of my portfolio allocated to energy anyways. And if you remember, 2% of my uh, original pie was allocated to energy anyway. So I'm getting that exposure. So if energy sectors stocks somehow hit all time highs or if they do really well, I do have that exposure. So that's the second reason why I decided to get rid of them. Instead of having individual stocks, it's better to just have them allocated into ETFs so that way I can still get some of that appreciation or some of that dividend yield. But yeah, like I said, we'll have to see how the sector does. I do have a little bit of exposure, so I'm not too worried. So the third reason why is I don't really believe in the oil industry. So this is the crude oil industry in the last 70 years. And you can see that in the year 2020, we took a huge hit here. We basically reached all time lows. We were so close to it. So this kind of shows me that the oil industry is not very stable. It doesn't show that much room for growth. And especially now in the year 2020, there's so many new trends of have renewable energy and clean energy. And honestly, oil is not really good for the environment in the long term anyway. So I don't really see the trends looking in the favor of the oil industry. So that's one of the biggest reasons why I don't see myself investing in the, the oil industry. So this is an article by Ecotricity and it talks about how the reserves of coal, gas and oil are going to be basically non-existent in the future even with supply and demand eventually one day there's going to be no more supply so even if demand is crazy through the roof there's going to be a day when there's no more supply left and then we're going to have to turn to something else and eventually when that day comes then what are we going to do these stocks are basically going to tank it's going to become non-existent because they're not going to have any product to do or to sell so unless they differentiate and go into a different aspect or a different type of business then they really don't have a future so that's one of the reasons why like it may not be in 2021 2031 they're still going to be profitable but at one point in 2071 or 2081 they're not going to be existent anymore so i'm looking to give my portfolio to my future children and pass it down to futures and futures so i mean yeah maybe it would be good for me to have in my portfolio but maybe for their portfolio it won't make any sense so that's why i'm kind of looking at it at the long-term aspect and how things will play out in the future. 
and eventually all the resources are going to run out from the world. You can see oil is at 53 years until the deposits could run out. We've got gas with 52 years left, and we've got coal with 150 years left. And in fact, recently, the government in California has issued a ban on gasoline cars in the year 2035. So you can see all the environmental trends are showing that oil, gas, coal, and all these other natural resources are going to run out. And with the rise of electric vehicles and clean energy and also renewable energy, there's going to be a lot of ways to kind of move away from these natural gases and all these different energy stocks and kind of move into new and renewable energy and all these clean energy that's good for the environment and it's also good for the economy. So like I said, these stocks will probably do well in the short term, maybe in the next 20, 30, 40 years, who knows? But in my personal opinion, after that, I don't really see them being too successful and even relevant in the future. Like I said, this is this stock portfolio I want to build for my future generations and not just for myself. So if you're building for yourself, yeah, these companies could be great in the short term. But if you're building it for your long term generations to come, then probably stay away from this company and move towards tech companies or more safer companies. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I just want to quickly summarize why I sold out of the energy sector. So the first reason is they don't really fit into my long term time horizon, my plan of retiring in 20 to 30 years. If I was in my 50s or 60s, I'd be super happy to have these stocks in my portfolio. I'm not really looking for passive income currently. I'm looking for it for long term growth. So that's why these stocks don't really fit into my portfolio. The second reason is I already have some decent exposure in my ETFs. So like I mentioned, VOO, VTI, both of these have some exposure to the energy sector. So if it does run up in the future, I can still benefit off the stock appreciation or off the dividends. But yeah, I do have exposure to them. So that's the second reason why. And the third reason is I don't really see the trends favorable for natural gas and energy, especially with the rise of clean and renewable energy and all the governmental rules and policies that they're implementing. For example, that California ban on gasoline cars in the year 2035. That's just one of the examples. And I can see a lot of other states and other places and countries doing the same thing in the future. And the fourth reason is I don't know how sustainable this sector is. Like I want to pass this portfolio to my future generations. And I don't see this energy sector surviving past my generation or the generation after that. So we'll have to see how it does. But for now, i rather invest into something that I know will be more safe. For example like Apple or Microsoft, something that I can see in the future being a big part of the community and being a big part of the world in general. And I don't really see the energy sector doing too much. And the last reason is because of one I didn't really mention in this video, and it's called SWAN. And SWAN stands for sleep well at night. And I like to have stocks that I don't have to worry about. And these stocks that I'm like, these energy stocks are ones that I'm constantly worried about because of their supply, because of trade wars because of all the regulations and everything else that has to do with it. So those are all the top reasons why I decided to sell out of my energy sector. So with that, that's all I have for you guys for today on why I sold out of the energy sector. And I just want to thank you guys for listening to my videos. I know I'd be rambling a lot and talking a lot and these videos could get pretty long. So I appreciate you guys for listening and getting this far in the video. Please like and comment and subscribe if you guys enjoy this content. I'm going to be trying to post at least once a week at the very least, but I do enjoy making these videos and it means a lot that you guys are liking the videos and watching all the way through the end. And even your comments help a lot. I mean, I know I don't get a lot of comments, but I definitely do get a good amount of emails. I've got one of my, he's become one of my close friends now, but he's been emailing me his progress on Acorns. And that just makes me really happy to see that I got someone to start Acorns and to do very well with it. So yeah, special shout out to the homeboy. I appreciate you for holding me accountable for my portfolios and showing me your growth and how you've been investing and how it's been working out for you. I appreciate that. And I feel like this is the start of something new where we can all grow together and become a community, a huge community. And who knows, maybe one day I'll start a Discord where we can all hold each other accountable. We can all grow together, invest together, and become rich together. And even retire early, that would be dope. So I appreciate you guys for listening and subscribing and becoming a part of this community so if you guys want to follow me on my social media i don't really have anything posted yet like i do have a few posts but nothing crazy you guys can follow me there and we'll, we'll probably start something there in the future and if you want to check out my other channel i do a podcast with a couple of my friends it's a basketball podcast so you can follow us there and we're also on spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, and some other platforms so you guys can follow us there and so, yeah, with all that out of the way, I appreciate you guys for listening. I really do. And remember, guys, everybody eats.